welcome to A Drink of Wisdom with Jay Wise and Nathan Drinkard. I'm your host, Cody Ward. Thank you for spending some of your time with us tonight. And as a reminder to all our listeners, besides being on all your favorite podcast platforms, A Drink of Wisdom is also on YouTube with each show segment available. Head on over and if you like what you hear, well, we would appreciate your subscription. What's going on, guys? Got a got a couple news bits today, I think. What do you, what do you think? Just just a, just a few of them, just a smidge here and there. But uh, hey, no time to waste. Let's go ahead and put them in a place. Let's roll. Like, let's talk some sports, baby. And talking is what we're going to do. Listen, I tell, I say this every week, and I believe this. We see what they don't, and we're going to say what they, what they want. And listen, this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, probably going to go down as one of the, the, one of the few three-day stretches of football that was just marvelous. I loved it. Good weekend. I'm ready to go. Let's do it. All right. In episode 27, we're recapping that weekend of football with the NFL playoff recaps and a look at back at the uh, college football playoff national championship. But before we can get into any football, we got to start in the NBA tonight with a blockbuster trade, uh, possibly one of the biggest in NBA history. The Houston Rockets have traded James Harden to the Brooklyn Nets as part of a four-team mega trade. The disgruntled superstar has been calling for a trade through the offseason despite new management and new additions to the team, such as John Wall and DeMarcus Cousins. The Nets, Pacers, Cavaliers – were all part of the trade and this is kind of the breakdown so the the rockets obviously shipped james harden to the nets uh in return the rockets received victor oladipo dante exum among some other players uh three brooklyn first round picks 22 24 26 a milwaukee first round pick in 2022 and four pick swaps with Brooklyn 21, 23, 25, and 27. Essentially, the Nets put every first-round pick on the table, four of those in the form of pick swaps, three and outright, just here's the pick, have fun. Uh, the Nets obviously get back James Harden. The Pacers uh, get Karis LeVert and a second-rounder, and the Cavaliers got Jarrett Allen and Tarian Prince. So it's a it's a loaded uh, trade drink. So with that in mind, uh, what are your initial thoughts, and who seems to have like won the trade more or less right now? Well, Listen, Brooklyn won the trade. Well, if Brooklyn won the trade and the Rockets were second. Why? Because they got the best players of the trade. Brooklyn got James Harden and the Pacers ended up getting um not not the Pacers, the Rockets, the Rockets ended up getting Victor Oladipo, right? So I think those was the two best players in this trade. I understand it was some young guys and you know, for what it's worth, but those two are the guys that established themselves as, you know, whatever level that you put them on. So I think Brooklyn won. But let me tell you something. James Harden, this dude, his plan worked. Evil genius, call it whatever you want. But I I personally think this. Remember we was talking about this a couple months ago, and it was like, oh, man, you ain't selling the form for James Harden. You you don't know. And then it was like, the only way you get James Harden, you got to put in Kyrie or KD, right? That's what we kept hearing. It got to be Kyrie or KD. So James Harden said, hold up, hold my whole glass that I got from the real club. Let me show you something. So what he did was came in the season, you know, with his dad, but looking like Frosty the Snowman. Then he didn't play that well, right? And then on top of not playing well and not looking good, I mean, let, let's be real here. Like James Harden never looked like, you know, a bodybuilding model ever, but he didn't look like he looked this year either. This year, he looked like he pulled up to the, the stadium in a minivan. So you got them to – then on top of that, what he did he start doing? He started talking trash. Now, at first, he wasn't talking as much trash. He just like, I don't want to be here, and that's it. Hey, James Harden, why you don't want to be here? Next question. But last night was like, listen, this is the straw that breaks the camel back. And I was like – I understand why he was upset, what I don't understand why he was so upset with the team. Okay, I do agree. You're not good enough to win a championship. That I agree with. I ain't mad at you for speaking the truth. However, you you do know you're part of the problem too, right? Like, you're not without fault here. And why do I say that? Because since the season started, once James Harden had to pass like 32 COVID tests because he want to do what he want to do, since he's been playing – Right, James Harden. You, there's no way you could tell me this guy looks like James Harden. And I got it. A lot of players that started off, they starting off slow, and you know you had a 71 uh, day off season, so that's not 
real quick, I'll say, I'll say he did have 44 in his first game. He came back and then he okay. had 34, 33. He didn't dress for the Sacramento game. And then he's been like bad since. Um, right. Because it's levels to this, it's right. levels to this leverage. He came back, right? Played them three games. So he showed, Hey, I can still ball when I want to. But then he said, if I come out here and ball, it's going to make it hard for me to get traded for. So now let me get a tad bit mediocre. So then he gets tad bit mediocre. And listen, for it's for one or two reasons why he got tad bit mediocre. I don't know. You know, it's not like James Harden called me and told me, but it got to be one or two reasons. Reason number one, he's he was out of shape, right? Or he's past his prime. Maybe he don't got it as much, but I can't say that. You just gave me three games where he looked like the old James Harden. So I go to option number two. I'm going to drive my stock down to get pennies on the dollar. How do I do that? I play a lot worse, and then I start talking trash. He did both. He made his comment last night, and guess what happened today? He is now traded to the Brooklyn Nets. So I just want to say, hey, James Harden, you're evil genius. You went out here, got fat, played like crap, and got what you wanted. That is beautiful. That is the American dream right there. Um, so, but, but for, for him to come out and be like, Hey, um, I gave this city all I got. Did you really, I mean, you played well for this city. I'm not going to lie. Did you really give him all you got? Cause you drove away every other teammate you had. Did you really, did you do it for the city or did you do it for yourself? Cause it felt like if you did it for the city, you would have got along with those other guys a little better. So you could get a title. That just me. might be saying the wrong, but okay. Now you got a good location. Um, now, enough of bashing Harden on his decision. Evil Genius is what it is. And I think Houston did do the right thing by going to get rid of him. You might as well just get rid of him. If he's going to be at press conferences, like talking down on the team and doing this, come on, you got you got 14 other guys here. Just let it go. It, you won't be the first team to suck, you know, after making the playoffs. You'll be fine. Just let it go. You know, figure out what you can do with the draft picks and everything else you got for him. And just look in the future. It is what it is. It's over with. Now, let's talk about his impact with Brooklyn now. Because now we know where he's going. We know where, who's going to be on his, te- on his team. And I want to say this. Hey, Nets, y'all did a fantastic job, too. Y'all waited. Y'all was patient. Clearly, that, that Russian cat that used to own the, the team ain't the owner no more because he would have been messed this up. So... You can win. You went out there. You you was able to keep KD, which I I figured they were gonna keep KD no matter what. But you was able to keep Kyrie too. Now I don't know as of right now. I don't know how promising that is to keep Kyrie. But you did get James Harden without trading Kyrie. But <laughs> we just see that these last couple of you know <laughs> weeks. I don't know what Kyrie got going on. I I don't know. I don't know. I let Jay. I'm pretty sure Jay got his opinion. But I would say this, you was able to keep a core three now. Now you have the three. You got James Harden, Kyrie Irving, and KD. If you get them three on the page, even though your bench probably looked like one of those little wire fence that you see outside of forms, it's pretty thin. You still got three guys that can get it done. So let's see how that go. I think this move to me, the Nets easily the top two team in the East, if not number one. It just depends on who you're talking to. Um, this move catapult them to the top, make them contenders. Because if one have an off night and the other two don't, that's that's a dog. You know what I'm saying? So it's gonna be very hard to stop all three. But before I close this out, um, as far as the trade go, it was a win for Brooklyn. I think it's a win for Houston as well. And if you dive into it, I was just saying something that, about this to you guys earlier. I like that Jared, um, the Cavs was able to get uh, Jared Allen. I think that's a good piece for them. Look out for them to make a little playoff push this year with their young guys. So I think the trade benefited a a lot of teams. Um, Of course, it's always a loser. To me, I would have to, like, really dive in and call somebody a a straight, clear-cut, 100% loser. But I think every team involved in this trade end up getting something that they can use as far as this year or something they can use in the future. So I thought the trade was good. James Harden, you're a genius. Keep eating, keep eating like you eat. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to, you know, 
full on declare a winner on this trade. I think we just we need to see a little bit um, of what follows uh, this transaction. Uh, it, it is pretty. It's definitely this. I think it's a safe pick to go ahead and say, yeah, the Nets won this trade because they they absolutely get the best player. Um, but I'm, I'm I mean I'm really intrigued um, by by what Houston did. Um, they get just you know an, an onslaught of draft picks. Uh, the Oladipo um, pickup is, is interesting, and you you look at what they did with the Russell Westbrook trade. So they they give up you know two established superstars, and they get you know in some sense a, a has been in John Wall, who you know can he can he still play? I don't know if we fully know that yet. Uh, then Oladipo, you know, he's had some injury troubles, but I mean, when he when Oladipo left Oklahoma City, he became a, a, a real star in Indiana, and had it not been for some, you know, some bad luck with injuries, I and mean, we don't we don't know how good that Indiana team, those Indiana teams may have been. So I mean, I I like what Houston's doing. Uh, they you know they recognize pretty quickly. It seems it seemed after you know you you dump the coach and your GM uh, slinks on out of town to Philadelphia. You, you could see um, what that did to those you know, Westbrook and Harden, uh, you get Westbrook out of there. I thought it was inevitable that uh, they should, uh, you know, move on from James Harden as well. Uh, Harden definitely had a, you know, he had a, he had a hand in this. It's just the, the same thing that we talk about, you know, from time to time, the difference between NBA, NBA players and NFL players. I mean, NBA players, you know, they, you know, they, they get their way eventually. The ones with, um, you know, a certain uh, stature in this league, that's what James Harden has. In, in regards to what it means for the Nets, it's, um, it, it's definitely, it's the, the three-headed monster of Kyrie Irving, James Harden, and Kevin Durant. They're going to score a lot of points. I don't think there can be no question about that. I, I am concerned a little bit about how it all fits together, uh, particularly on the defensive end. And these, um, the, the loss, of, loss of Jared Allen and Karis LeVert, I, I don't think, I don't want to understate those two losses. I think I think if you went around to talent evaluators around the NBA, you know, if, if you could have Jared Allen or DeAndre Jordan, I think Jared Allen wins that battle hands down. Um, I think, of course, you know, they probably had to let go of him because I think uh, given, you know, his, uh, his youthfulness, he's probably the more attractive commodity than Jordan. Um, but, and in Karis LeVert, Karis LeVert, you know, he's, a, he's an up and coming star. Um, I'm, and I think it's, um, you know, that, that little detail can get lost in this, uh, in this deal. But I think, I think the Pacers and how he plays, that's something worth watching. You know, can the Pacers kind of remain on the trajectory trajectory they were with Victor Oladipo? I think that could be somewhat of a seamless transition. You know, uh, Karis LeVert's going to get an opportunity to star on that team. You know, he's going to, you know, fill in where Oladipo left off. So I think, I think that's something worth paying attention to, but with, with Brooklyn, like how does it fit? Cause I think this is a scenario we went through, you know, a couple months ago. And we talked about, you know, what would it mean? I think I don't think I'm not worried about Kevin Durant and how he fits. He, he he's proven he can fit on any team with any amount of stars. The thing I, you know, the thing I'm interested in is, you know, assuming Kyrie ever gets back on the floor, what does it look like with him and James Harden? That that's the question I have. And can is Steve Nash is he capable or or can he manage all those personalities as a first year head coach? Now, of course, he's got uh, Mike D'Antoni to lean on as, you know, the, the lead assistant, so to speak. So that's you know, that's got to be somewhat beneficial. But there's, there's still a lot of unknowns. And I think I got to see this play out to some extent uh, before I'm comfortable, um, you know, putting any type of real expectation on them. I do think it is a fair assessment to say, you know, I think on paper before, it, you know, it works out that they you, you would think they'd be, you know, probably I'd maybe put them right behind Milwaukee at this point. But I'm. I believe they're, you know, five and six or something, something like that. We know, we do know KD, you know, he's been in the, the COVID protocol or, you know, whatever that that's going on with that. And of course, you know, speaking of Kyrie, um, what, where is, where is Kyrie? I mean, do we, we don't even, I don't think we know. You know he's missed, what is this, five straight games. And now, I, and these are just, you know, you just peruse the, you know, the interwebs and you just see certain things. But now you're seeing, um, you know, you know, people got real concerns, people that know him, you know, is he gonna, could he possibly just sit out the rest of the season? I, I'm just curious, like what, I, I would, I'd be interested in speaking to Kyrie Irving at this point. I know he wouldn't have no interest in speaking to me, but what, like, what is, like, what's going, like, what's going on though? Like, I, I just, it's a real question mark. It, it seems like every time we speak of Kyrie Irving, it's like, what, like, what is he doing? 
there, there's no there's first of all there's no injury that that's that we know of i don't there's no injury it's just it's been described as personal personal reasons and and i'm not and i'm not saying there's not a valid reason that he's not playing basketball i think it's a valid s- reason i think it's a valid reason they asked steve nash did you know Kyrie wasn't going to play no he didn't call and say nothing he just didn't show up and then right before a game you know running them that he wasn't playing so I don't think it's a valid reason. I think it's Kyrie, speak, just Kyrie. That speaks. That speaks. Uh, yeah. That, no, that, yeah. I was gonna get there eventually. But that speaks. Uh, that does speak volume, doesn't it? I mean, when you're, you know, when your employers like don't know where you are and don't know why you're playing, that's something that um, that's something that the the general you know average Joe he's not. That's not gonna fly. You know, it's uh, it's it's one thing to just not be at work. You know, maybe you can maybe you can slide to some extent. You know, with some level of leniency, but then you're not gonna even bother to offer up an explanation you can probably go you can probably go find employment somewhere else and obviously that's not what's taking place here um but i'm just it, it's just curious and now you're, you're seeing all these things like monday you was at a birthday party and you was maskless and like that like that i mean that doesn't matter much to me but then and then tuesday we're we're like what are we doing we're on a zoom call at at a, a democratic district attorney in new york uh you know a launch party for her like yeah because that's really cool like I'm just, you know, the whole, the whole idea, you know, I'm, I'm split on those things because, you know, somebody had a birthday party and you want to go do that. And I, I think that's, you know, that we're reaching if we want to, you know, regulate those aspects of people's lives. I'm not going to be mad at that at all. But now I don't, you know, conservative, liberal, whatever you want to call it. I don't think, I think Brooklyn Nets fans will be much more interested uh, in what Kyrie Irving can do for them on the basketball court. You know, I don't, I, 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 I'm not that I would even if I was a liberal, I wouldn't be all that interested in you know Kyrie Irving's politics. That's that's not helping us win basketball games, which is you know kind of your that's the reason you're getting paid. And no one's saying that Kyrie Irving can't have you know his views or you know even if sometimes they seem a bit ludicrous. You know, I, I don't think the Earth's flat myself, um, but it's just one of those things where you look at it and you say Kyrie like. I mean, everybody, you can, you, you can do both of these things you seemingly want to do. You can have an impact in your community, but don't, for, I mean, don't forget why you, you know, you're on this, you know, national stage in the first place. It's because of your ability on the basketball court. And I think it, you know, at some point, you know, you got to, you know, people close to Kyrie have got to ask him, like, do you still want to play basketball? That, that's the question I have. You know, I, I think, again, you can do both things. I think you would have a great impact on the community. And play the game of basketball, but it it doesn't appear to me right now that he wants to do both. If you're missing five straight games and there's no reason whatsoever, I don't know why the, I don't know why the Nets are paying him. And to some extent, may, is that the reason the Nets felt like they had to do this? Because they feel like Kyrie Irving is unreliable. That, that's a question I have. So, and and when you think when you look at it from that perspective, you know maybe maybe this is not a three headed monster that we think it is. Maybe the Nets did this because they just can't rely on Kyrie Irving and they need somebody to fill that void. Yeah, this uh, this whole thing, we, we haven't had a chance to really get into the NBA season yet. Football has been so wide open. But the, the Nets, we remember, they won their first two games. They beat Golden State and then they beat Boston. And it was just, oh, the Nets are going to win it all. Go ahead and send them the trophy. It's over, da-da-da. And then all of a sudden the tires started coming off, you know, the rate, the train started coming off the tracks and then Kyrie's off dancing and doing zoom calls and all the things you just laid out. And I'm very surprised that they, they got this done because I kept thinking, okay, they are going to trade James Harden, but it's not going to be to Brooklyn. They're not going to give up basically everything else they have. That's not Kyrie or KD to get him. But yeah. like, if you look at the trade, I mean, yeah, they lost some really good players in Jared Allen and Karis LeVert. I'm not going to argue that, but like y'all said, they kept their core. They kept their their three guys. And honestly, like, yeah, you don't have your first round pick for like a hundred more years, but you look at the roster top to bottom, you look at their depth chart, it's really not that bad. I mean, this this looks like a roster that can win it all. It's not like you go, oh, well, there's three guys, and then there's just absolutely just nothing after that. It's like you still got DeAndre Jordan, you got, you know, you got names on this roster. You got guys like Jeff Green, like Joe Harris, like um, Landry Shamit, he was a you know somewhat of a contributor. I mean, I'm not saying these guys are all all world by themselves, but I mean, if you're talking about you know 
bench guys and, and fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever options, it's not horrible. I mean, this, this roster, it didn't get completely gutted. So the, the, the picks are concerning. I mean, you'll all, you, you don't have your draft pick until 2027. And as a franchise who has tried this twice now, you tried this in the late 90s, you tried this in the early 2010s, and now you're trying it again, this thing where we blow up everything to go get one run and one good, solid run at it. It was probably more of a move to keep Irving and Durant, though, beyond just the next season or two. Um, you got to remember, these guys are – I think they were both on four-year contracts. This is year two. I mean, by year three, year four, I mean, you start to get to the edge of that contract. You know, guys start getting that trade window. Maybe they wanted to keep these guys around. I, I'm concerned about the Nets, though, being all in on this when you talk about the fact that they did sign Kyrie. They did sign Katie, and this is going to be their plan. And they got, um, you know, they got Steve Nash. And they built a nice nucleus of young players and talent. They, they got together really without picks until recently. Did you really have to go this all in? Did you not believe in what you had built after 12 games to the point where you had to sell the farm to get James Harden? I don't know, but they did it. And I mean, it's hard to argue that, hey, you put a guy like James Harden with the other two players you have, you might, you, you can probably go win a championship with that or, or, or multiple ones if they stay together. Uh, I share the same concerns. I, I think this stuff with Kyrie is ridiculous. You know, they probably hope, like you said, this brings him back to the fold. Like, hey, Kyrie, got you another star. You want to come back and play now? You want to come play, man? Because... You know, maybe he was already checked out, not interested. Who knows? Um, some of the other stuff, though, as far as the other teams go, I think that the Rockets still they, – they got they got a, obviously a whale of a haul. But if you look at their starting five, which could be John Wall, Victor Oladipo, P.J. Tucker, Christian Wood, and DeMarcus Cousins, that's not a horrible team. I mean, they're, they're not going to be a train wreck. They're not going to be a 20 or 18 win team this season. I mean, they're going to be a decent team. They should compete. Probably not, maybe not for a playoff spot, but they should not be terrible. Uh, I thought Cleveland got a nice haul. I think getting Jared Island is really nice. Um, you know, he's going to have to share time with Andre Drummond right now, who's playing really, really well. Um, he's kind of had a bit of a resurgence down there in Cleveland, but um you know, if not, he's a good trade piece. If not, you got two really good centers. Uh, Torian, Torian Prince is a nice guy too. Cleveland has kind of made some waves. They're five and seven. They're, they're looking better than maybe people thought they were. Um, but I, I have one question for both you guys, and, I, and this kind of comes on the heels of the Kyrie, Harden, and all this other stuff, and all the other stars in and out. Do you think the NBA is heading for a, another labor dispute issue between the the players and the in the management and all that. When you talk about the fact that the NBA is giving all these, obviously the NBA gives way more control of their stars, right? Than most leagues do. And now you've got James Harden getting fat and requesting a trade and Kyrie going to party and missing games left and right. And these are two of the biggest names in the business. Do you think that maybe this is starting the NBA is starting to go, did we, did we get this wrong? We need to start maybe pulling the reins back a little bit. Like, or do you think this is just water under the bridge and whatever? Mm-hmm. I, I I personally think it, it'll be water on a bridge. I think yeah. if you took COVID out of this situation, this would just be another NBA season. You got to understand, the yeah. NBA was built on a global game that individuals took it to the next level. So if you try to, let's say, take the NFL approach, that would probably put you in, like, some hot water. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I, would they probably want to bring the hammer down on the individual players a little more? Yes. But I don't think it's going to change the t- the whole picture complexity of the NBA. It's just one of them things, man. We all trying to figure out how to maneuver through this time right now. So, yeah, I, I don't think it's going to bring a dispute where you have a stoppage or anything in the NBA. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think it does anything drastic like that. The one thing I, I would say, like, is that the NBA should be concerned about is, and it, it's probably it's this seems like it's probably just a Kyrie Irving thing for right now, at least you know from my eyes. Uh, but player, players just missing games for no reason. Like, I think the, the question in my mind, like they're, they're talking about, you know, if Kyrie Irving, you know, violated, you know, COVID protocol with whatever party or whatever he's doing, you know, he, you know, forfeit a game check. Well, I mean, if it comes down to it that it, like he's missing games for no good reason, which, you know, given the fact that we don't have a good reason that we can probably, you know, that's kind of what we're assuming. Every game you miss, you should be docked a game check. And that charity, and that, excuse me, that, that game check should like, it should go to a charity that you don't support or something, you know, cause don't, don't, don't go to, because don't give money away to a charity you like, you, you know, support, you know, because then I don't know, maybe some guy, Ooh, you know, this, this is good. You know, I miss games and now I feel good about myself. Cause I'm, you know, I'm giving money to a good cause. No, no. If you're, you know, if you're a liberal, no, get, give that game check to parlor. So it gets back up online. You know what I'm saying? 
I just, I, I think that's the one like thing that. the NBA should concern about, and the, yeah. the kind of the 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 low management piece. I'm not saying that's completely ridiculous, but can we? If guys are generally healthy, they should be playing. And if they're not going to play, you shouldn't get paid. I mean, you should not get paid if you're not going to work. 